Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe. Going to be talking today about Chelsea's newest signing, also Thiago Silva and for Cairo Tomori. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. Let's start off with the latest news, which is Chelsea's newest signing, a new centre-back in Xavier Moramba. Yes, he's not going to solve Chelsea his defensive issues for the 2021 season but potentially in the future he could be a big player for Chelsea a lot of hype around him I spoke about Moamba on the channel previously especially during lockdown Chelsea's potential interest in him and potentially bringing him in this summer from Barcelona after leaving their academy and now it's been confirmed that Zarkoncella did a great piece that I definitely suggest you go and read about Moamba the background of him why people rate him so highly and why he can become a good player in the future Chelsea put a statement out last night saying Chelsea Football Club can confirm the signing of Xavier Moamba from Barcelona Barcelona. The 18-year-old signed a professional contract at Cobham earlier this week and will join our development squad ahead of preparations for the new campaign. A Dutch under-19 international, Moamba is a tall right-footed central defender who enjoys playing with the ball at his feet and is equally as strong in the air. After being watched closely by the Blues, the Dutchman has made the switch to West London, committing himself to the club until at least 2023. Definitely a player for the future. I'm sure he'll join the development squad. There's also talk and rumours about him potentially going out on loan. Um, I think he's a good signing. It's a progressive signing. It's someone that could potentially become a really big player in the future. Naturally, there are those comparisons to Virgil van Dijk, which I think is a lazy comparison. But of course, you know, the history and culture of uh, Dutch football playing out from the back is a big thing, especially for central defenders at the moment. Just interesting to see how he develops with Chelsea, how he gets loans, how good those loans are. I think that's a big thing for young players. If Chelsea get the right loan for him, he can progress and develop. Will it be somewhere like the Championship or will it be somewhere like across Europe, as we've seen Vitesse, some of the young players go there as well learn their craft and then come back to Chelsea in the future. Um, I think it's exciting because now we've got a manager and a coach that wants to give young players an opportunity. It's really how fast um, Mwamba develops over a number of years and whether he'll be able to come back and break into the first team in the future. I think of the likes of Mark Gurhi, who could come back to the first team. And I'm going to talk about Fakari Tamori as well, who of course is very much further down the line in his development. But I think it's an exciting signing. He's got a cool first name as well, Xavier. So we'll have to see how he progresses in the coming years. Please let me know your opinions on this signing in in the comments below. Let's move on to another defender. This Let's All Chelsea is dominated by uh, centre-backs and uh, Thiago Silva being offered to Chelsea. This is from Mike McGrath in the Telegraph the other day. Um, Chelsea are considering Brazil centre-back Thiago Silva as a free transfer to bolster Frank Lampard's defence for next season. Thiago, 35, will play for PSG in the Champions League final on Sunday before leaving the French Giants after eight years, with Stamford Bridge emerging as a possible destination. Thiago's wages of 1.3 million a month will drop significantly, but is determined to play in England could be an important factor in his next move. I'm torn on this still. I think there's a lot of people who are excited about it because, of course, the name of Thiago Silva, the history of Thiago Silva, very impressive defender. I think at 35, it's a bit like, you know, Chelsea fans, and I'm sure a lot of people have been criticising Arsenal recently about signing a lot of older players. Is it the most progressive, intelligent signing? I'm not entirely sure. I have to be honest. I think Chelsea definitely need experience and leadership in that back line, which Silva could bring. He's never played in the Premier League before, and he is coming to the end of his career. He could do a good job in the short term because of his experiences now, especially in the Champions League. I just worry about transitioning over to the Premier League and the style of football. Football, Frank Lampard wants to play. There's definitely, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not discrediting Thiago Silva. I think maybe a couple of years ago he'd be a brilliant signing for Chelsea, one of those big signings that you'd want to bring into the Premier League. And it's quite clear that Silva himself wants to join uh, the Premier League and wants to play in the Premier League before his career ends. This definitely feels like he's been offered to Chelsea, as Mike McGrath states, rather than Chelsea going out there and trying to sign Silva himself. So I think. In terms of Chelsea's actual interest in Thiago Silva, I don't think it's really there at the moment. That's not being reported. It's more the case of Chelsea have been offered uh, Thiago Silva. I think the wages is a big thing for me as well. The age as well. I look at also Lewis Dunk. We've been speaking about Lewis Dunk. His Premier League experience, I think, is vital. And also the blend of youth and experience. I mean, that is a big thing in terms of Although we want to see young players come through, you can't always discredit the the intelligence and also the, the positives of having experienced players. We've lost Pedro and Willian at the dressing room this summer, and I do worry how that's going to impact the team next year. A lot of young players in attacking positions, but defensively as well, we need that leadership and announce and intelligence back there as well. Maturity to dominate that area. Silva could bring that absolutely, and he could adapt to the Premier League very well because of the class of the player himself. But I just I think that's a concern as well. But then on the flip side, do you look at younger players that could be more intelligent signings? 
in the long term. I think that's an interesting thing. There's no doubting the pedigree and prestige of a player like Thiago Silva, but I just wonder whether this is the smartest move for Chelsea if they were interested in bringing in Thiago Silva. Do you think he could solve our defensive issues? Let me know in the comments below. And lastly, I want to talk about Fakayo Tsumori um, because Jacob Steinberg, this piece from Jacob Steinberg, he initially references, of course, Kai Havertz. There's interest about that. Also, Ben White, Chelsea monitoring developments. Uh, the Brighton defender, Ben White. We've been linked to Ben White before. He's a very young defender. Apparently, Liverpool are determined to get him as well. But the interesting thing for me out of this piece from uh, Jacob Steinberg, which we've heard a lot before about Chelsea sort of needing to sell one of the centre-backs, the current centre-backs, to make way for a new centre-back. And we've been talking a lot about who that centre-back could be. And I've spoken about all of them. And for Kyle Tsumori, there's been a lot of speculation on social media. Firstly, it was about a loan to France. But now it's, there's a little bit of concern that Chelsea could be actually trying to sell for Kyle Tsumori. I don't think we're going to sell for Kyle Tsumori. I'm not entirely concerned about that. I think it'd be a real stupid move for Chelsea to sell for Kyle Tsumori. I don't think it would make any sense. Not even a top league guy side over there. And they'd have to pay a lot to get him out of his contract. I mean, you've got to remember as well, for Kyle Tsumori signed a big contract recently for Chelsea. A five-year deal. I think it was around December time. Um, Chelsea have nailed down all their brightest youth prospects. They've done it consistently over the past year. I think Tammy Abraham's the only one to not get a new contract. But I think even he got a contract extension recently just to see him out for another couple of years before they give him that bigger contract and negotiate that. So Chelsea have been nailing down all these young players and there's a reason behind it because they see bright futures for all of them. So to just sell him quite cheaply and quite quickly after one promising year at Stamford Bridge for me would be stupid. I don't think it'd make a lot of sense. Logically for me, yes, maybe a loan would be good for him next season to get him out the club, to get him more experience uh, next season, potentially in the Champions League as well. Especially if we're going to bring in a more experienced player and order heads to that defence. And that could be good for Fakari Tsumori as well for his development. I mean, look at what he's done this season. And yes, I think people have forgotten about the quality of Fakaru Tsumori because he's been injured for so long. Similar thing happened with Christian Pulisic, if you remember, when he got injured for a long period of time, people forgot about the talent we had. And then when he broke into the first team, had an amazing end to the season. I think it's the same with Fakaru Tsumori for me. I think Tsumori was so good at the start of the season for Chelsea. He really was. Frank Lampard rates him so highly. Tsumori played for him at Derby and played for him at Chelsea. And then, of course, he got injured. Maybe there was doubts about his form, confidence. But trust me, for Kyrie Tsumori, he's got a big future at Chelsea. He really has. And Chelsea are not going to flippantly let him go easily. I've spoken about this with Andreas Christensen. Chelsea are now worried about having another Kevin De Bruyne situation. And I think Tsumori definitely, for me, falls into the same category. The only concern with not selling Tsumori is who goes out the current centre-backs. That's the big thing. I mean, funds could be made elsewhere with selling Emerson, with selling Jorginho, um, potentially back to Italy. They could raise funds that way. But if we do need to sell one centre-back, then you're sort of asking about who that could be. For me, you can't sell a cut. Zuma because I think on form he's the best out of the current ones. There's probably struggle selling Antonio Rudiger not only because of his influence in the dressing room of some of the German players coming into the first team now but also injuries, persistent injuries, given his age, given rumours that Chelsea wants to give him a new deal recently. Andreas Christensen, I spoke about this recently from a quote from Matt Law, where he was speaking about Christensen, where Chelsea are worried about another KDB situation, letting Christensen go too soon. He goes to a big club in, say, Spain, like Barcelona somewhere, really develops, becomes an amazing defender, and Chelsea regret it. That's the difficult thing. If Chelsea can't make funds elsewhere, who are they going to sell? I mean, getting maybe Tamori off the wage bill for a year may help, but not substantially. I think, you know, you need to sell one of those centre-backs. I've always said I think Christensen would be the one I'd sell. I think it's probably the most realistic to sell, but there is that concern from apparently within the club about his potential further down the line. But no, Tamori for me, we shouldn't sell Tamori. I don't think we will sell Tamori. I think he's still got a big future at the club. Don't forget what he did earlier in the season where I think he was one of our best centre-backs. Him and Zuma were starting to form a really good partnership um, and unfortunately I think because of Tomori's injury form and everything that halted at the time whether he gets a loan or not I think that's still up for debate and I think it probably is leaning in the direction of him getting a loan next season which could be really good for his development but selling him would be an awful move. Those are my opinions of Fakari Tamori. I, I wouldn't worry too much because I think that big contract he got earlier in the season, I think nails him down for a few years. And I think Chelsea would want a lot more than a sort of a cheap fee just to let him go. I think a big club would have to come in and take him off of Chelsea's hands uh, this summer. But please let me know your opinions on Fakari Tamori. Do you think he's got a big future at Chelsea? Please let me know in the comments below. But that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss. And I'll Upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea. Have a great day, and I'll see you again.